Welcome to Kramer Control Tutorials. My name is Brian Morris with Kramer Electronics. This video will give you an overview of the K-Touch Builder web-based software. The first step is navigating to kramerbuilder.appspot.com in your web browser. From there, type in your credentials and log in. Once you log in, you'll be directed to the K-Touch Builder. Let's take a look at some of the features in the K-Touch Builder. At the top left, you'll find the File menu. The first option in the File menu is New Handset. By creating a new handset, you can select if you're going to use an Android device or an iOS device. You can also create what button scheme you want to use, whether it's white, brushed aluminum, or black. The save function allows you to save all of the settings in this login, including your image libraries, your device libraries, and all of your panel settings. The backup function will allow you to save all those settings locally to your computer. This backup file is small and sized and can be shared easily. The restore function allows you to restore a previously saved backup. The Upload Virtual Device XML function will allow you to import an XML from a virtual device in kconfig. The Browse menu allows you to browse the different libraries within KTouch. Here you can browse the panel libraries where there will be panel templates. You can browse image libraries where there are both KTouch images and user uploaded images so you can share your images with your friends. Browse your devices, which is all of the RS-232, IR, and Ethernet drivers that you might need to find. And your feedback libraries as well, if you wanted to have feedback from RS-232 devices. The options gives you options for handsets and the settings within the K-Touch Builder. And the help menu links you to support and tells you what version you're using in K-Touch. Below these menus, you'll find two quick buttons. The first quick button will allow you to add a new handset. The second quick button will allow you to save. This save will save to the cloud and not locally on your PC. Be sure to back up your files every so often so you avoid losing any of your work. The upper left hand pane is where you can find your tree for all of your panels and all of your pages. The lower left hand pane is where you find the properties for everything that you're selected on. This is the properties of button commands, the properties of buttons, labels, and everything else in the builder. The right hand pane is where you can find your image libraries, you can browse new image libraries, you can find your devices and browse device libraries, you can find feedbacks, and you can find everything else including widgets and variables. Let's get started so we can see some of the other features. First, we're going to click Add New Handset. This will pop up a new window where you can select between an iOS device or an Android device. For this demonstration, we're going to select an iOS device. Please know that all of the features and all of the settings that we're using will apply to both iOS devices and Android devices. So we'll select iOS, and then we'll select Next. The next page allows you to select the specific device that you're going to use. In this example, we're going to use a standard iPad with a 1024 by 768 screen. We'll click Next. The next page will allow you to select a theme. This theme can be white gloss, black gloss, or brushed metal. Give you examples that's the brushed metal and that's the black gloss buttons for this example let's use white gloss and we'll select next here you will also have an option to import an xml file from kconfig this is completely optional and there will be future videos on how to do this and why you implement this we're going to select finish
Once you create a new handset, you'll see that some fields are now populated. The lower left hand side, you can see the handset properties. This is where you can see the name of the handset, what handset you're using, the full resolution of the handset, whether or not to hide the navigation bar, what scale we're using for the builder, and what the usable area is on the handset. This usable area is important to know if you're using your own custom images. To import images properly, you want to be sure that the images you are using are the proper resolution. The center pane is still empty because we haven't created a new panel. The right hand pane is where you can see all of your image libraries. The images for the size panel that you're using will import automatically based on the color scheme that you chose. If you choose to, you can also import any other libraries of images from K-Touch images to user images. Let's take a closer look at the image settings. In the right pane on the screen, you can see that the image library for size one white buttons has been imported automatically when we created a new handset. We can view some of these by expanding the tree. These are images that are all in the K-Touch database. If these aren't the images we want to use, we can simply import images from our computer or we can browse the image library to search for other K-Touch images or other user uploaded images. The top quick buttons here will allow you to save the images you have in your library, add a new library, delete a library, cut a library, copy a library, paste a library, and move a library up or down the list. We can also click on the Actions button, and it'll give us those same options in text. In addition to those functions, we can browse the image libraries, and we can upload our own images. Let's browse the image libraries to see what other images there are. In this window, we can browse both the K-Touch image library and the user image library. The K-Touch image library contains all of the K-Touch images, including button images and background images. The user image library contains all of the images that have been uploaded by users and shared for everyone to use. This is a great option for you to upload your own images, save them, and share them with every other user. This gives you the ability to share with your friends and coworkers without actually having to share the image files between computer and computer. Let's do a search in the K-Touch library for any black images we can find. Now you can see all of the black button images have populated. On the left you can see checkboxes which will allow you to select individual libraries to import. On the right, you can see a view window. This view allows you to preview all of the buttons in that library. To import, simply check one of the boxes and select import. Now you can see that this image library has been imported into my separate library. Now let's do a search for any user images. Click the user box type in what we want, check what the different backgrounds are, and search. We can see here there are a few various images. We're not going to use these because we're happy with the backgrounds that have been imported automatically for us. What happens if we want images that are on our PC but not in the image libraries? It's very simple. Minimize this. Let's create a new library in our database. We'll rename it over here in the properties. This is where we can select if we want to share or not share our library. From there, while that's selected, we'll go to Actions and Upload Images. 
This is where we can browse our computer for the images that we want to use. Simply select the images that you want and upload them to the new library that you created. Now that we've seen images, let's take a look at devices. By clicking on the Devices tab, we can move to the Devices. You can see Virtual Device 11 and Virtual Device 12 were automatically imported when we created a new handset. This is what correlates KTouch to KConfig. When you program a device in KConfig, it has Virtual Device buttons. Those Virtual Device buttons each have a command to access them to use the functions that you've programmed in the KConfig device. Here's where those codes live in KTouch. If we expand this, you can see buttons 1 through 32 are in Virtual Device 11, and buttons 33 through 64 are in Virtual Device 12. By clicking on each of these buttons, you can see the actual raw command that's attached to each one of those buttons. The next tab on the top right is Feedbacks. Feedbacks will give you visual feedback on the screen based on a command that comes back from your virtual device. We will discuss feedbacks in depth in a later video. The final section on the right is called More. Within More, we'll find Actions, Widgets, Launch, and Navigation. Let's look at Actions first. Within Actions, we can add a delay to a panel. Adding a delay puts a momentary space and time between commands on a button. This allows you to have warm-up sequences to, for example, warm up a projector that takes 30 seconds to warm up before it's ready to be used. A message will pop up a display on the screen to say whatever message you want it to say. Setting a variable can do many things here. It can do something such as change a button text, change a button label, change the color of a button, or do many, many, many other things. There will be some advanced videos in the future that will explain the use of variables. Wake on LAN allows you to send a command to a device on your network to wake it up to have it ready to be used. The widget section allows you to add a button, allows you to add a link. A link will allow you to transport between panels or between pages. You can add a label, which is a text display on the screen. You can have a URL, which will link you to a web page. Or you can have a, have a drawer that you can pull out from the left, from the right, from the bottom, or the top of the screen. The launch section allows you to launch an app through KTouch, open mail, have a link to mail support to send alerts, or open your web browser. Navigation gives you the ability to create a button for back, for syncing your panels, to select your different panels, and to go to your gateways. Now that we've seen the main functions within the KTouch Builder screen, it's time to build a panel. In the panel section on the left hand side, simply click the plus sign and it will add a new panel. The default name is Panel. If we'd like to change that, we can click on it, and down in the Properties, type in what we want to call it. Within the Properties, we can find an option to share this panel, which would give you the ability to save this on the KTouch database. Just be advised, if you share anything in KTouch, it's accessible by any other user on KTouch. You can add a description to this, you can hide this, you can make this your home panel, which means that when you open the KTouch app on your device, it will automatically jump to this panel every time, and we can enable or disable swipes. Within this home panel, we can see entrances, motions, gestures, portrait pages, and landscape pages. Entrances are a set of commands that can be tied to a panel. Every time the panel opens, it will execute a certain stack of commands. 
Motions are for when you move your device. You can move your device with your wrist to the left, to the right, up, or down. It will sense that on your device and it can execute certain commands that you program into it. Gestures are a set of gestures that you can tie to your device to say, if I tap anywhere on the screen with one finger, I can power my system on or mute my audio. Or I can say, if I swipe up with two fingers, it will ramp my volume up. Swipe down with two fingers, it will bring my volume down. This is great for users that have transport control or are controlling something like a cable box or a satellite receiver where they don't want to look at the panel while they're changing channels or adjusting volume. Portrait pages are pages when you hold your device in portrait mode. Landscape pages are pages when you hold your device in landscape mode. This concludes the overview video for the K-Touch Builder. For more in-depth examples and more features of the K-Touch Builder, please move on to the next video. From Kramer Electronics, I'm Brian Morris. Thank <laughs> you.